Accessing a Windows application using COM. Accessing an application library is almost as easy as accessing an OS system library, provided you can get documentation for the contents of the library. However, that is not always readily available. Another option on Windows is to use the OS functions to access the COM objects and then manipulate the COM objects from Python. Unfortunately, COM is a complex technology and has been extended over time to include features such as distribution over a network as well as various data access mechanisms. Compounding the difficulty is the fact that documentation for COM objects is often sparse and hard to find. Nonetheless, COM is often the most effective option for automating Windows applications. The easiest way to use COM objects in Python is to use the PYWIN32 package, written by Mark Hammond and available for download from the SourceForge website or included as standard in the active state distribution of Python. The following try it out demonstrates the use of PYWIN32 to open Excel preloaded with the tool hire.xlsx file e you used in the earlier sections of this chapter. Try it out using com to present a file open dialog, tool hire com.py. This try it out demonstrates how to use the Excel com interface to open the application and let the user select a file e all from within Python. If you are using Windows, follow along with these steps, this example works under Windows only. 1. If you do not have the active state version of accessing native APIs, 2. Open your pipe, import Win30, 3. Save and run, 4. Click OK, 5. Confi, how it works. After importing the Win32.com.client module and aliasing it as com, you set the file e path to a variable so it's easy to change if needed. Note, you should use the path to your own folder, not the one that is used here. The next line sets a file mode variable to 1. This determines what kind of file e dialog is opened, in this case a file open dialog. The value was found by trial and error, valid values lie between 1 and 4. You then created the application com object using the dispatch function and made the window visible by setting its visible property to true. At this point the window appeared on screen but without the usual grid of cells. This is because Excel actually stores the grid in another com object called a workbook. You could have created a workbook, or more accurately a set of workbooks, or tabs, and opened the file e directly instead of using a dialog box if you knew which file e you were interested in. Workbook objects contain cells, and it is these you would use if you wanted to create or modify data within a spreadsheet. The next step was to create the dialog object using the file dialog method of the application. This took your file mode value as an argument. You then set a couple of attributes of the object to ensure it opened in the right place and with an instructive title. Finally, you called the show method of the dialog that displays the dialog box on screen, with all the usual functionality available to the user. If the user selects the OK button, the return value is 1. In this case you can call the execute method of the dialog object that proceeds to open, or save, if necessary, the selected file e. At this point the spreadsheet gets populated with the workbooks and appears as you would normally see the application. You have now seen many techniques for integrating different applications in a scripting program. The next section gives you some advice on how to bring these techniques together to complete a scripting project. 98 Chapter 2 Scripting with Python Automating tasks involving multiple applications. Scripting was defined at the start of this chapter as coordinating the actions of other programs or applications to perform a task. So far, you have seen several enabling modules that can help you to interface with these external programs, but the bigger picture of how to automate a full workflow out has not been discussed. Normally, when you approach a workflow out automation project, you look at what the human process is. You identify the systems used and the actions taken. You look at the input and output data. You then try to replicate that using whatever automation options are available for each system and process. You should take one other step before jumping in too quickly and that is to eliminate any steps that are done purely for the human user's convenience for example, formatting data into a more readable layout when the data is only an intermediate result. If the computer can read the data without that formatting, it's an unnecessary step. Once you have identified the necessary steps, along with the systems and tools to be used, you can look at the automation options. This section considers some guidelines that should minimize the pain in developing such multi-application scripts. As a general rule, use the following techniques in the order discussed. Using Python first. Python comes with many support modules that enable you to replicate the OS functions and commands directly from your code. Other modules provide access to different file e formats and network protocols. For example, Python has modules for directly manipulating the Windows registry and the Unix password file e that avoid calling external programs. Using Python directly provides an efficient and flexible solution that will be easier to maintain in the future. This should always be the FireST choice if possible. Using operating system utilities. 
The OS provides many tools and commands for performing system administration. Many of these tools have command line interfaces, CLIs, that make them easy to call from Python code using the subprocess module. Tools that operate without interaction are the easiest to work with, even if this means using data files as an intermediate step because the files can be used as a recovery point should the process fail, you simply restart with the last successful step. Using data files. Many tools and OS commands use configuration file A to control how they function. By creating or modifying these configuration file A prior to running the command, you can often control the behavior without the complexity of interacting with the processes in real time. In addition, you can usually drive such tools by using input file A and generating output file A rather than interactively providing data at prompts. You can build such file A, or read them, using Python code, and you have seen how Python modules can assist in parsing many common data formats. Automating tasks involving multiple applications 99. There is a third-party module called Pexpect that makes interacting with an external console-based program easier. It works by looking for expected, hence the name, prompt strings from the target application and then responding by allowing the programmer to send responses. This works well for login dialogues and similar interactions. Using web services for server-based applications. Some applications provide web services as an interface option. This is often an attractive alternative to using a third-party module, although the trade-off is often slower performance and the added. Using a third-party module. Many popular applications have third-party modules that facilitate interacting with the application or direct manipulation of their data file lay. Microsoft Excel is a good example, with several modules available to assist in manipulating spreadsheets. You can manipulate many other proprietary file formats using third-party modules. Use your favorite search engine to find such modules. Include keywords like the application name, Python, and module, and you should find what you are looking for fairly quickly. The main caveat with this approach is that third-party modules often work only with older Python versions and may not be updated to the latest build. Most such modules are open source, with generous license conditions, so you usually have the option of updating the code yourself or, if that is too big a project, perhaps copying just the code that you need for your project. Due credit to the original authors should, of course, be given. Interacting with subprocesses via a CLI. If a tool has a CLI but cannot be driven using a data file, e, you can still use the subprocess module and interact with the process using stdin and stout as was demonstrated with the X editor earlier in the managing subprocesses section of this chapter. This is a potentially complex strategy because you have to anticipate every possible response or input request that the application may make. Similarly, error handling can be difficult to control and often, if an application deviates from the expected interaction, you may have no choice but to abort your script and try to recover manually. This is why using data file A is preferable if at all possible. Note on Mac OS X there is an alternative technology, which is not covered in detail in this book, but can be useful for scripting Mac applications. It is based on Apple Script technology and its command line interface, OsaScript. By writing small Apple Script programs and calling them from Python via OsaScript, you can often get Apple programs to join in the dance, so to speak. Third-party modules are available for interacting with OsaScript, but you can run it directly, using the subprocess module, too. 100 Chapter 2 Scripting with Python Complexity of parsing the XML or JSON data format used by such services. Web services are discussed in more detail in Chapter 5. Using a native code API If the application you need to control offers a C library as an API, you can use types to access it from Python. The biggest problem you are likely to face with this approach is finding good documentation for the API. If documentation exists, this can be a very effective technique, but if not, it can involve a lot of painful trial and error. The Python interactive prompt is an invaluable tool in these scenarios. For Windows applications you can often find a com interface and access that via the WIN32 package. As with using types, the lack of documentation is often the biggest obstacle. Using GUI Robotics The FINAL option for GUI applications with no API is to interact with the GUI itself by sending user event messages into the application. Such events could include key presses, mouse clicks, and so forth. This technique is known as robotics because you are simulating a human user from your Python program. It is really an extension of the native code access described in the previous section, but operating at a much lower level. This is a frustrating technique that is very error prone and also very vulnerable to changes in the application being controlled for example, if an upgrade changes the screen layout, your code will likely break. Because of the difficulty of writing the code, as well as the fragility of the solution, you should avoid this unless every other possibility has failed. Summary 
This chapter looked at how to automate tasks involving several different applications or OS utilities. You saw that Python's standard library contains several powerful modules to assist in this. The OS, OS.Path, Schultel, and Glob modules, for example, can provide much information about computer resources and help you manage files directly from within Python. The subprocess module provides a mechanism to launch and interact with command line programs from within your scripts. The time, date time, and calendar modules can assist with time-related tasks and calculations. The time.sleep function can introduce a pause to your script's execution while waiting for other processes to complete. You also saw that common data file that can be generated, or used as input by applications, can be created or read by Python using modules such as CSV, config parser, htmlib, and xml.itri. If no other form of access is available, it may be possible to use types to access C functions exposed by dynamic libraries. On Windows similar functions exposed as a COM interface may be available, and the PYWIN32 modules simplify access somewhat. These techniques are usually more complex than using data file or calling subprocess functions. Summary 101 Finally, you reviewed the options available for scripting with their pros and cons, including the last resort option for GUIs of sending OS events to the application windows. This last option is fraught with difficulty and should only ever be used when all other means have been explored and exhausted. Exercise.